Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this video. I'm on a trail in Tennessee, pretty much all by myself. I'm on the Grand Gap Loop in Big South Fork State Park in Tennessee. And I've been riding, you know, the uh, Fazari Abajo Peak on this trail. And as I was riding, I thought, you know what? I've been asked a few times about the upgrades I've recently done. So I had my camera out with me uh, I know I'm sweaty, but uh, you probably can't tell this far a distance. I'm going to keep my distance here. Uh, but I thought I'd talk about the uh, the upgrades. I actually tried to do this video a few other times and either weather. Oh, it is hot. Noise. Light lines. I'm... <laughs> or some other circumstance just got in the way. And I figured, well, I'm out here in this beautiful scenery. Uh, nobody else is out here, at least for now. Uh, the trailhead was empty at uh, 10.30 this morning. I'm gonna take this opportunity to talk about the upgrades on my Fazari Abajo Peak. So I think what I'll do is I'll just start front to back and talk about the upgrades. Uh, I shot some B-roll earlier, so I'll interject some of that footage in this video. Um, but yeah, let's start with the front. Let's start with the fork. I upgraded uh, from the stock X Fusion McQueen fork. It had 140 millimeters of travel, 34 millimeters of stanchion, um, and I upgraded to the RockShox um, Pike Ultimate. I love my RockShox Zeb Ultimate so much that I decided just to stick with RockShox. I, I love uh, the tunability, the simplicity, one click, and I feel a difference. And so I went ahead and, and went with the Pike Ultimate, it is 150, uh, 150 millimeters of travel. Uh, I wanted just a little bit more travel, even though this is just gonna be primarily my trail bike. I just wanted a little bit more travel, being a heavier rider, and I just wanted a little bit more plush feeling. So, you know, a little bit extra millimeters in that travel has helped tremendously. It's working phenomenal. I mean, I just, I just love it. It, it's it's obviously not as beefy as my Zeb, but again, this is my trail bike. I'm not uh, I'm not going to be doing anything extreme with this. Um, moving up, we'll go to the cockpit. I did uh, change some things on the cockpit. Uh, I want to talk about the SQ Lab handlebars. This is the SQ Lab 30X 12 degree uh, back sweep, 45 millimeter up sweep, or uh, uh, rise, I guess. The up sweep is not, is something different. I should clarify that. It's a 45 millimeter rise. I think it's only a four degree up sweep, um, but it's a 12 degree back sweep. And I've really enjoyed that. I love my PNW bars on my LaSalle Peak. That's an enduro bike. I've really, I've really enjoyed that little bit extra back sweep. It has helped my hands tremendously. So this being a trail bike, I decided, well, let me go a little bit further and try the SQ Labs. And yeah, I've really enjoyed that. It has been, it has pretty much helped my um, ham numbness between the, the fork and the back sweep on the bars, the compliance. This is a 31.8 clamp. So that's a little bit different than the 35 millimeters, which I've been using. I've, I've tried the one up bars. I've tried the Spank Vibercore um, uh, 800s. Between those two, this is a little bit steeper back sweep, higher rise and a little bit more compliance, and I've really enjoyed that. Um, you know, I love the PNW grips, so I had to add those uh, to this bike. It, it, yeah, I can't say enough about the loam grips. The PNW loam grips are, I, I just love. I love the feel of them in my hands, very grippy, and uh, they have never failed me. I recently did a brake bleed on the brakes. Uh, these are the SRAM levels, these are the original brakes that came with the bike. And uh, I decided to go ahead and hold on to these for now. Um, I decided to go ahead and do a brake bleed uh, because the rear brake was feeling very squishy. Even after upgrading uh, or up, changing out the rear pads, it still felt really squishy. Did a brake bleed that solved that problem. I might go ahead and do that on the front brake as it's starting to feel that way. It's not as bad as it was on the rear, but probably going to do that on the, uh, the front brake as well, as well as change the pads out. So that's probably coming up. Moving on to the back, um, I decided to keep the X Fusion shock. 
Uh, this is the X-Fusion Pro O2 Pro RL, I think is what it's called. You can't really tell from the... I decided to keep it. It's a 135 travel, uh, but it, it was noisy and uh, didn't feel right. So I actually took it off the bike and serviced it and that made a world of difference. Uh, just took it apart, cleaned everything. Uh, I didn't even replace the seals. The seals looked great. So I, I just went ahead and kept those on and uh, that has made a world of difference. I also found out when I removed it that the rear shock bolt was bent. Uh, contacted Fazari. They were amazing about replacing it for free. So uh, that was awesome. I also went ahead and changed out the bearings in the rear linkage. Um, did a lot of jerry-rigging with that. <laughs> Didn't find out until later that there's actually a tool to get those bearings in and out. You don't have to hammer them out. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so between the, the servicing, the linkage uh, bearing replacements and the new rear shock bolt, that has made the whole bike quieter um, and ride smoother. And yeah, it just feels better altogether. Um, I did upgrade. So, so the group set that came with the bike was NX, SRAM NX system. Uh, so I upgraded the cranks just like I did with my LaSalle Peak. Um, I upgraded these again. If you've watched my video on on the crank and pedal upgrade, uh, you know I changed to the GX, uh, the SRAM GX Lunar Gray 170 millimeter um, uh, crank arms. I actually moved those over to the LaSalle and put the NX back on here. Well, I loved the 170 millimeter cranks and the, the um, you know, just the, the little bit of uh, uh, pedal clearance that I got from those. So I went ahead and upgraded these again. <laughs> Uh, so they're the GX. Also went with an oval, just like I did on the LaSalle. I went with an uh, absolute black oval, um, chain ring, 32 tooth. Before I move to the very back, just to let you know, I did replace the wheels. If you watched my wheel upgrade video, you know that I put the Stans Flow EX3s on this bike. Um, those have been great. And when I did the Fazari build, or the, <laughs> the Fazari LaSalle build, I moved those wheels over to the LaSalle. So uh, I needed to upgrade from the WTB wheels on this again. And I went with the Spink um, Vibercore 350s. And I really love these. These have, I, they've impressed me the most. Of all the upgrades I've done, the wheels have impressed me the most. With these, I did not need as burlier as a wheel as my e Stands Flow X3s. You know, those are for enduro riding. This is a trail bike. So I felt like the 350s uh, would do well. I do have the Tannis Armor inserts. So that combination, the 350s with the Tannis inserts, I didn't feel like I needed to, to move up to the 359s. Um, but again, these have impressed me the most. I, I'm really impressed. The, the hub, the Spank hub, it's a three and a half degree engagement, um, 32 hole. It's worked great. It's worked really well. I, I, you know, these were just, I just threw them on and I've been using them ever since. No problems whatsoever. Now, um, because I went with the XD hub on the, uh, on the Spank, I needed to change the cassette because the cassette was an NX. So that was an HG hub. Uh, fit. So I went ahead and upgraded the cassette. This is a, a SRAM GX 10 to 52 tooth GX cassette. I have this on my LaSalle. Beautiful. I love the range and yeah, it has worked perfect for me. As far as the derailleur, you know, still the derailleur and the shifter NX, those things will break eventually. I'll upgrade those to GX when that time comes. Other than that, it's, it, it's just fine. You keep it keep it tuned and it's it's fine. So you might notice that the the tires still have the the white Maxxis um, OEM tires. So yes, these are the original tires that came with the bike. When I upgraded the wheels and tires, uh, well, when I upgraded the wheels back last fall, I went ahead and upgraded the tires as well. And uh, so I'd only been riding the original tires for like three, four months, maybe three months, I think total. So when I got the, you know, when I put everything back together, I saw the tires, I was like, you know, these, these look great. There's no problems with them. You know, uh, the knobs, you know, on the uh, DHR2, the front of them are starting to get a little rounded, but uh, otherwise the, the outside knobs look great. Um, same with the front tire. I really don't see a reason to, to change them out right now. Maybe in about, you know, three or four months, I might do that, but, 
but yeah, so that's mainly it with the bike. Um, you know, if this is your first time watching uh, a video from MTB Over 40, I would love for you to give a subscribe and stay with me on the journey. This journey is all about me in my 40s, getting on and staying on a bike and, you know, see where it goes. So if you like that type of content, give a subscribe. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That would be awesome. I really appreciate it. it let's me know that you appreciate this type of content. Also, I would love uh, for you to leave in the comments what you want to see more. If you, you know, if you just like I said, I got some questions about the upgrades. And so that's why I did this video. So if there's anything you'd like to see more of or something that you haven't seen yet, please leave those in the comments. I do check those regularly. So uh, feel free to do that. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and you know, the journey continues. So live, learn and send it. It's never too late. See you next time.